Digital World Acquisition Corp is the most discussed stock on the planet right now. But do you know about these other SPACs that have extremely strong links to DWAC? In this video I will discuss a total of 4 SPACs that are all going to have a big week. And we'll all see huge levels of volume as the interest in DWAC continues. One of these you might already be aware of, but I'm pretty sure that you are not aware of all of these. If you're new to the channel and want to hear more about exciting stocks about to make huge gains, then hit that like and subscribe button. Now let's dive into these exciting stocks to see what all the hype is about. And to see what has led some investors to believe that the SPAC boom is back. The first SPAC I want to talk about is DWAC, Digital World Acquisition Corp. If you've been living under a rock for the past week, you might not be aware that this is currently the most talked about stock in the world. Topping every major social media forum and setting new all-time records on the stock market for SPACs. This is the SPAC that is merging and bringing public Trump Media and Technology Group. This is the company that Donald Trump has announced plans to launch a new social media network called Truth Social. He said the platform would stand up to the tyranny of big tech, accusing them of silencing opposing voices in the US, which comes after Trump was banned from Twitter and suspended from Facebook following the Capitol riots. The company will operate across its three main brands, Truth Social, TMTG Plus and TMTG News, with a clear vision for the company going forward. TMTG is looking at the opportunity to disrupt the big tech, and this is not just Twitter and Facebook. They are looking to rival Facebook and Twitter with Truth Social, streaming services and conventional news such as Netflix or CNN with TMG Plus and, TM and TMTG News, and looking to rival Amazon and Google in the long term too. TMTG see this as an industry ripe for further segmentation with potentially hundreds of millions of users, where they reckon one third of people would use a Trump backed social media platform. Donald Trump has been using social media for years to connect with his supporters. Prior to this, he had a huge reality TV presence thanks to shows like The Apprentice. And before being banned off social media, he had amassed over 90 million followers on Twitter and 33 million on Facebook. So it's very possible that these new media platforms could be very successful. And considering the massive celebrity following that Trump has, Truth Social could very quickly find itself with a very high number of users if the launch is successful. An early version of Truth Social will be open to invited guests next month and will have a nationwide rollout within the first three months of 2022, according to a statement by Trump Media and Technology Group. And the Digital World CEO has said that more Trump details coming soon. So who is the CEO of this Digital World Acquisition Corp? While most attention has been on Donald Trump and Trump Media and Technology Group, for which he is the chairman, little is known about the SPAC team that has teamed up with him or the man at its helm. Meet Patrick Orlando, the CEO of Digital World as well as two other SPACs. Mr. Orlando is the CEO of Benazere Capital Acquisition Corp, ticker B-E-N-E, -E, which I will speak about in just a moment. Anyone that has followed SPACs over the past 18 months will remember that there has been a few SPAC CEOs for whom everything seems to turn to gold. From Shamat Paliapitiya and his series of social capital SPACs that seen the likes of Virgin Media, SoFi and Clover Health go public, or the Harry Sloan led Eagle Investments Group that brought numerous companies public like DraftKings or Skills, or other SPAC kings such as the Gore Group, Bill Foley or Michael Klein, bringing public lots of major companies such as Paysafe or Lucid. So let's look at the other SPACs for which Patrick Orlando has strong ties and are getting media attention on the back of Digital World Acquisition's huge rise. Benazeri Capital Acquisition Corp is a blank check company formed for the purpose of effecting a merger, capital stock exchange, asset acquisition, stock purchase, reorganization or similar business combination with one or more businesses. While they may pursue a business combination target in any industry, they intend to focus on technology focused middle market and emerging growth companies in North, Central and South America. In July, it closed its initial public offering of 10 million units at $10 per unit. Shares of the Class A common stock rights and warrants are listed on NASDAQ under the symbols BENE, BENER and BENEW respectively. The company is led by Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Patrick Orlando, 
Chief Financial Officer Francisco Flores and Chief Operating Officer Guillermo Cruz. The company sponsor is Arc Global Investments. And according to this article in Bloomberg last week, BE INE is in talks to merge with hydrogen fuel firm eCombustible. This potential deal could value the combined entity at between $800 million and $1 billion. Interest in hydrogen is surging, with many governments and businesses betting on it as the clean module of the future. Still, creating a hydrogen economy won't be easy, as the multitude of companies in the space need to prove their technologies can be commercialized and work on a large scale needed for success. Hydrogen holds the promise of decarbonizing industries that can't easily run on electricity, serving as both a fuel and a way to store energy. Hydrogen can generate electricity without greenhouse gas emissions. While nearly all the hydrogen produced today comes from natural gas, it can also be stripped from water using renewable power with no carbon emitted. The first generation of such green hydrogen plants is now under construction due to come online in the next few years. It could potentially power cement and steel factories, cargo ships and airplanes alike. Since 2010, e-combustible products holdings has been developing the science behind the clean hydrogen-based fuel and its production modules. In that time, they've developed the technology with teams in the US, Peru and Colombia and secured international patents and launched pilot installations. It'll be very interesting to see about this valuation as there is very little information regarding e-combustible available right now. What we do know is that there are several multi-billion dollar hydrogen fuel companies that have made huge gains in the past 12 months on increased investor interest such as Plug Power, Fuel Cell Energy, Ballad Power Systems or even Hylian. But with the current interest in SPACs and Patrick Orlando and Trump, anything could happen with BENE in the coming weeks. The next SPAC on the list is ZGYH, Young Hong International. You may or may not already know about this SPAC, but it's highly likely that you do not know about the next SPAC, so stick around for that. Patrick Orlando, who heads the blank check company taking Trump's Truth Social Public in the US markets, is also the CEO of Young Hong International, a tax haven Cayman Islands registered company with a business address in Wuhan, China. Young Hong International aims to capitalize on growing opportunities created by consumer lifestyle businesses that have their primary operations in Asia. So unlike the other two SPACs, DWAC and BENE are both based in the US and targeting the US market. ZGYH is targeting the Asian markets, which is the biggest market in the world. As they say here, Digital World was the most discussed stock on trading focused social media site StockTwits a platform seen as a measure of interest from individual investors and meme stock players. Message volumes on stock tweets related to the SPAC were up more than 9,000%. The same level of interest has not been seen in Young Wong yet, and that is in part because there is very little known about this SPAC right now, and also the fact that very few people are even aware of its existence. In a crazy 48 hours on the markets, we seen DWAC gained from only $10 up to $175 by 10 a.m. on Friday. BENE went from $10 to $18.90 a little later, and the little known Young Hong International reached as high as $13 again a little later. The last back on the list that very few people are aware of is Makia Capital Acquisition Corp. MAQC. This seen a small spike in trading on Friday, but only hit $11 because very few people know about this one. And having dropped right back again to $10, this is relatively risk free for trading when the market opens again. Remember that $10 is the price floor for pre merger SPACs. And if we see huge volume on DWAC and Patrick Orlando's other SPACs this week, then MAQC will inevitably see much bigger volume too. So why does nobody know about this one yet? Let's look at this SPAC. McKee Capital Acquisition Corp is a special purpose acquisition company targeting a technology focused middle market and emerging growth business operating in North America, providing a more efficient transition to the public markets. On February 2021, the SPAC filed for initial public offering with the SEC to raise up to $200 million. 
and the team is headed by CEO Jeff Ransdell, a venture capitalist and founder of Fuel Venture Capital. He is a former top executive of Merrill Lynch and is regularly called upon to share his insights on the global economy with outlets such as CNBC, CBS and American City Business Journals. The team also includes Maggie Vo, Geronimo Peralta and Chief Investment Officer Guillermo Cruz Reyes who you might have noticed that I mentioned a few minutes ago as also being the COO at BENE. And it's only when we dig into the company's recently amended S1 filing that we find one of the company's nominee directors is none other than Patrick Orlando. The same Patrick Orlando that is CEO of both BENE and Digital World Acquisition Corp. So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. If you appreciate the level of work and research that goes into each one of these videos, and you've watched all the way through, then hit that like button. It really helps the channel out a lot. What do you think will happen here next week? Do you think that DWAC will continue to rise again? And what knock-on effects do you think that it will have for each of these SPACs? And what do you think about the Wall Street Bets type of trading? Is it a good thing or a bad thing in the stock market of 2021? Is it a good or bad thing to have such organized stock trading groups? Drop me a comment and let me know what you think of these SPACs. If you're new, subscribe and hit the bell notification and I'll catch you in the next one.